And away we go. First 100 metres uh, straight in line before they curve out of the station, out of the stadium and go on the uphill. So on the opening leg, wearing one, Steffi Berla, right uh, in the middle of things, but being surpassed there by uh, Vibeka Skofterud in the uh, red pants for uh, Norway. And uh, David, because he knows that uh, we have, must have a, a gap to the Russian after the two classical uh, technique uh, rounds. And here we are losing a lot. They are more than uh, 10 seconds behind the Russian. Much more. Well, don't get too depressed, Inga. There's still a long oh, way I'm to go. I'm depressed <laughs> just now. <laughs> well, you can see the Czech Republic there in uh, sixth place. The Czech Republic, who have the services of uh, Viola Bauer, who's very good in the classic, and uh, she's going to need to do some very good work to bring the defending world champions back into contention. So Kokina actually hasn't got that much further away from Peruzzi, who's put a burst in, but uh, Italy now will find this really tough to stay with uh, the next Russian, Medvedeva. The Russians easy to pick out, they're all wearing uh, the same sort of red hats. And uh, Anf Antonola Confortola goes through. Lena Anderson there, just a pats on the back there to Maria Wutkist, who uh, goes over nine. Already Storti for France, who's handed over to em uh, Elodie uh, Bourgeois. Pass. But I think that the gap between Russia and the teams from number three to number nine is a little bit, uh, little uh, more a little than it was a couple of kilometers ago. Do you mean less or more? Less. Sorry. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Uh, but it's still it's still a good 10 seconds, as you can see. A little bit more than that. But it was 22 between Russia and Norway with the, at the extreme. Now you can see uh, Hilda Pedersen on the left of your picture in red there. Going with Viola Bauer just behind uh, 14 on the far side. That, but still, of course, the rest of this particular rotation before they change again. And when they change, it'll be the same track, but they'll skate as opposed to stride and glide. But I also think the Russian girl is struggling a little. Her grip is not the best. Yeah, but once she gets up the top of this hill, if she's uh, up there, she's in the right place at the right time to take advantage of the downhill speed. And Pedersen counter-attacking here on the climb. And you see the gap is only 14 seconds. It was 24 after... Who's going to hand over to Yevgenia Medvedeva Abruzzova on the third leg. And for Norway, it's going to be the in-form Kristen Steirer who really has been uh, skiing very excellently but you can see the snow accumulation there as Viola ba uh, sorry as Baranova comes in this is really hard work so Medvedeva goes off on her way and uh, away goes uh, Kristin Steirer and I think these uphills might well suit her and I think it's also very important for uh, the Norwegian team to have the gap only 7.2 kilometers for Steyr is possible to come into the back of the Russian girl rather soon and uh, going away a heavy course for the free technique for, for Steyr I think it's not enough to keep the Russian girl she also had to go away from her with Chapalova in the last leg yeah but she does have as you can see that she's still got uh, what uh, over 3,200 kilometers to go on her leg so meter not kilometer meter meters I should say only four seconds it was seven and there's Neumann over, leading the next chasing group there with uh, Sabina Valbuza. And uh, we'll get a time check on them. What sort of work do they have to do to uh, get up to the leaders? The check get the gap to the Russian girl. Meanwhile, Ebi Sackenbacher, who in the last uh, kilometer and a half has looked in trouble, is definitely in trouble as uh, both Sabina Valbuza and Katarina Neumann go straight behind and Germany are in trouble because Ebi Sackenbacher is uh, running out of petrol. But look at Valbuza. Yeah, Valbuza on the right of your screen in third place in the red hat there then Katarina Neumann over the Czechs well their last best result was when they were fourth in the Olympic Games that was uh, when Russia withdrew as a result of the uh, tests that were coming through about uh, 
Lasrissa Lasutina. And uh, the worrying thing for German fans is that Evi Sackenbacher, after looking so good, has fallen into a hole. The energy has drained out of her. There's nothing left. Look at that. That is so laboured. And I, I, I'm not convinced it's the skis. No, it's the, the shape just now. But the gap mustn't be that big. So Claudia Kinsel uh, will be two many seconds behind for the last leg. So she has to struggle now. Well, the Czech Republic, they used to be represented on the last leg by Hanusheva, who was always nicknamed the Little Katarina, but uh, she's not in the team, but they've got another youngster, Ivana Yanikova, and uh, I wonder whether she can live up to the work that uh, Katarina Neumannova has done. Neumannova has done a great job, but those front two have uh, used a lot less petrol, and they're coming down the hill now, turning left, then turning right, and Styra hasn't got to the front, it's still the right Russian, Yevgenia Medvedeva Abrutsova, who's coming in, and what sort of speed have they got? 54. Now that's the fastest descent we've seen. That is uh, four kilometers faster than in the uh, classic, which is what you would expect. Styra being uh, caught here by uh, Valbuza for uh, Italy. Neumann over for the Czech Republic in fourth place, and. Uh, what a fantastic job Sabine Valbuza has done. The question is, can Ariana Follis hold on and keep up the good work? But it is going to be Medvedeva who passes on to the golden girl. That's uh, Julia Chapalova to take us into the last leg. And uh, Julia Chapalova already with uh, gold and silver medals. And she uh, on the left there, but uh, a very good change for Norway by Marit Bjergen, who was very quick, very smart, and gets away nicely. But that was important for Russia to have the gap three seconds uh, before the Norwegian uh, the team. It can be a problem for Marit Bjergen to keep those three seconds. Now from Oberwiesenthal, all Germany's hopes are pinned on Claudia Kunzel, and she's got a lot of work to and uh, the Italians, well, if they do pull off this bronze, well, it will be due to the work done by Peruzzi on the first leg. And then uh, good, decent effort by Confortola, but Valbuza really will have made the medal. And perfect for the Olympics next year. Yeah, just so a sort of good team for the Italian. Absolutely, just the sort of boost. And Italy, who last won a medal 2001 in Val di Fiemme when they were uh, third. We have to. no problem yet for uh, Marit. No problem. Still sticking there. She wants to wait till maybe the last section of the climb. She's. I know she's slipstreaming Chapalova, but she needs to be careful. The problem for Marit is she's too narrow to Chapalova. Yeah. Citra, all coming, coming like in the sprint. Here we go. Up coming like in the sprint, uh, David. Yeah, and there she chooses this big, tough uphill to make a meter, to make two meters, to make three meters. Now Chapalova, the big question on her, five meters, six meters, and Norway go very much into gold medal position. It opens up. Don't worry about the time. It's the distance. Chapalova, can she get back to her? And it looks as if Marit Bjergen may well have sweet revenge here for the uh, double pursuit, and now she's on the downhill. But the pro problem, David, is that it's snow in the track. That can be a problem for Marit Björgen. Yeah, but I'd exchange that for the opportunity to be out front. Look at that yawning gap there. The Norwegian flags are up. They're hearing now that this is a possibility. Marit Björgen, who's had silver and bronze medals, this is to collect a complete set. Coming round to the right-hander now. We'll get the speed time. 53, that's OK. Just steps round there. Just a little anxious, a little tension over the bridge. Now she she turns left-handed. Tomorrow she'll be hoping to sprint down here for the gold medal, but just at the moment she's bringing Norway home for the first gold medal since 1982. Vibeka Skofterud, then Pedersen, then Styra, and Marit Bjergen, the great sprint star for Norway, looks over her shoulder, but she's taken the goal for Norway. Julia Chabalova, who anchors Kokina Baranova Medvedeva, must settle for a silver medal joy for Norway it's been a long long wait 
And don't forget Italy, look at this. This is a huge success here, Inga, as the girls rejoice. Look at the work. Marco Alborello and the team have worked this out to perfection. This is a tactical triumph as well as a skillful piece of skiing. And Paruzzi on the opening leg to give him a decent start. Confortola to stick in there, to hand over to Valbuza. Valbuza, who with Neumann over, brought them into medal contention and has given the chance for Ariana Follis here to become a major medalist for the first time in her career and Italy take the bronze medal with I think Claudia Kunzel in the distance coming in the defending world and Olympic champions on this occasion must settle for fourth and how important for Italy for the their own Olympic championships next year not the medals only for the men but also for the women in the cross-country ski Huge.